Hello and welcome to IoT Connectivity Simplified. We're going to take a look at installing a 32-bit image on a Raspberry Pi. And this is a good entry level um, for people who um, uh, can't afford to go out and buy the, the, the bigger Raspberry Pi 4 or 3. So what you can see on the, the screen now is the Raspberry Pi 0W. Now, there is a different, another version, which is the 0W, I think it's version 2, which supports 64-bit. It's a little bit more expensive, but, but not much. This is the older style, which is a 32-bit operating system. Um, what does it come with? Well, you can see there it's a very small unit, and you have your SD card. You can see that on the right-hand side. That's where we need to put our image, which we're going to go through in a minute. And then there's two micro USB ports um, that you can see there. Now the top one is for power and the, the bottom one um, is a standard USB that uh, you could uh, put in you know, some Bluetooth adapters for keyboards and mice. Um, the bottom connector there on the right hand side is a mini HDMI cable. So again you can put this into monitor or a TV and the, the the connector at the top is a CSI connector don't ask me what that stands for um, for connecting cameras um, so very low energy what does it come with it comes with a, a wireless LAN um, Bluetooth 4.1 and then Bluetooth low energy and uh, you can see on this particular version, you have some uh, uh, connectors or you know empty holes on this one. Uh, call it a 40-pin header. So that you can buy these pre-fitted with a header, and that's that's quite useful to have on um, for clipping wire connections on, uh, etc. When you're doing testing, but also to maybe clip on some option boards. So this. This particular unit um, retails for about £15 on, on this particular site, Pi Hut. Um, but again, you can shop round. I'm not promoting this in any way. Um, I know that when I bought mine, there was some on a, another website beginning with A where you could buy two for, for quite a low cost. So what else do you need? Um, you'll need the um, uh, Raspberry Pi W. You're going to need some way of powering it. So you, you know you can buy power supplies off, off you know off Raspberry Pi or you know for, for this particular unit. Um, I would advise you to go for the Raspberry Pi WH, which means it comes with the header. And then this might be interesting for the Bambinos out there. It's a long time since I used this, but you can buy a pre-installed. Uh, micro SD so it's already got the the Raspberry Pi image on it's called noobs now when I last bought this this come with like a very stripped down version of Minecraft on as well um, so that will get your kids interested in, in in using this particular one you can use this card on on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 3 as well um, you just um, need to make sure that you get in the 32-bit or the 64-bit operating system. Installing the image on the SD card for a 32-bit operating system compared to a 64-bit is, is very similar. Um, you're going to need to download the, the imager first and there's the different versions, so Linux, um, Mac and Windows. And then if you have the same problem as I'm having with my firewall blocking the traffic, you won't be able to use the the list that they have on the software. So here, this would be your go-to option. Um, I'll explain why I don't use the desktop in a minute, but um, it seems that halfway through the install, my, my firewall's blocking some traffic and it's a it's beyond my control because it's a company PC. So the the way around that is to go back to your Raspberry Pi software page and then download options. 
and there's a few on here. Um, you can put the desktop version on a Raspberry Pi uh, 0W. There's, there's not a problem with that. It will run. But it's only got 512 um, megabytes of mem memory, where the Pi 4 that we installed, the 64-bit desktop version on, has got 8 gig. So what I would recommend, and it's a good training exercise anyway, that we will install the light version. And the main reason for that is just the boot up time that it seems to take forever to to boot up the the desktop version on a on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So we'll download this and we're ready to go here. So we can use the manual method again. So go down to use custom, select your image, choose your destination. I haven't got a, an SD card installed at the moment. Then don't forget to enter this information. Just be careful, you need the host name to be different because I've already got one installed. So um, I've called this one house zero, which is different to my other one. Then we need to enable the security shield so we can have the remote terminal automatically boot up. You need to set a password for that. Tick, tick your LAN and then put in your, your uh, SSID and your password. Um, and click save and then you'll have the option to write and when it's finished you should have a successful message as shown now uh, and then you're ready to install the SD card into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Once you've installed the SD card as shown allow the Raspberry Pi Zero to go through its um, setup procedure. It will take a, a while you'll see that little green light flashing it goes through and it first of all it sets up your your secure shield connection then it reboots then it um, sets all the Raspberry Pi information up then it reboots ready for you to to use it and a good indication is just watch that green light it will go to a solid green light normally when it's when it's finished and then we're ready to to, to use putty so putty is free download um, You'll need admin rights to install it, but once you've installed it, it should work okay unless your IT has really locked your PC down. But I have this, this PC has admin privileges for installing software. I haven't changed any of the settings. I've left everything at its default. So we just need to put in the host name, and if we can remember that, it was house zero. And we can see we have a connection now. I will type in the password. So once you've um, got to this stage, we, we know everything's, everything's running. You can actually use this htop command to see the processes that are running and how much memory you're using. Let me just expand that. It's a nice little, um, it's like your Windows you know, resource you know, um, manager or viewer. So. This is so. This gives you an insight into what applications are running and how much of your CPU power that you're using. So, not much difference. Really nice little powerful um, board to get you going, especially on something like Node Red. But um, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to click the like button, click on the bell for further notifications, um, and um, thanks for listening. Hope to see you soon.